Again, guys, this is really how we wanted to use our COVID-19 money. Most of it went to military spending, military that is now being used against us. And it's so easy for anybody to go out and call people thugs and what have you. But meanwhile, someone died over having a fake 20, allegedly. And the Federal Reserve is printing $36 million, $36 billion fake 20, so effectively $7 trillion or so dollars that are benefiting exclusively the establishment elite or elite institutions that that money didn't actually go out to the people it went back to the beneficiaries of the federal reserve and federal reserve banking and wall street that is not reflective of the u.s economy or the u.s people it is effectively a system that has very few beneficiaries it's a system that you know it's not even the federal reserve itself if the federal reserve was used to help people for example if those certain interest loans were given to the people through like the u.s post office or something like that and that was given uh, so that people could pay off their debts or what have you at zero interest it would be one thing but it, it's the exclusive beneficiaries of very few elite institutions that are beneficiaries of this entire system so it's not even a political thing it's about uh, overthrowing a, a system that doesn't work for the people anymore and we think about social contracts the social contracts that we talk about are things that we all engage in the life liberty and the pursuit of happiness but the social contracts are not actually being upheld to everyone so if these contracts benefit very few people, what incentive do any of us have in standing with these contracts anymore, right? We are so offended with a lot of the rioting and the looting, but that's because that is a contract, a social contract that we mostly resonate with and we relate to, and it's something that we mostly honor. But meanwhile, black lives and a lot of other lives are being looted every day and no one says anything about it. Why are we in a society or a system where we are more concerned with the aesthetics of targets and a black life having had died right and it's a systemic problem it's a deep-rooted problem i think it's something that we need to address constructively and we need to come from a place of love but it's also something that we can't pretend doesn't exist and so with that i think one of the more constructive conversations i think we can have is about being a government for the people again right this is not how i want my tax dollars to be spent on military and it just like 9 11 did not uh, you know we know we've gone into war over 9 11 and so many people have died a lot of kids and what have you in the middle east have died and 9 11 did not resurrect the twin towers or and and the war and the bloodshed that's come out of 9-11 did not restrict anybody from the Twin Towers to bring them back. So in the same respect, why are we complaining or attacking the looters so much without being so sympathetic or empathic to their situation? And the fact that, you know, looting may not bring back George Floyd, but in the same respect, these wars are not bringing back anybody that died in 9-11. And it's something that very few people benefit from. And it's something that a lot of the establishment whether it be Halliburton or what have you, are capitalizing from bloodshed and capitalizing from death. And no one questions them, right? And it's about, I think, beginning to ask the right questions. And it's so easy to get caught up in false narratives and in gaslighting uh, and, and you know, con even conspiracy theories or otherwise. And it's not about that. It's about the things that are happening that we know we need to change effectively in every way, shape or form. And I, and I agree with you, Christian, the writing is not the answer, but is war the answer to all the lives lost in 9-11? Like all those, all the bloodshed that's come out of the war has not resurrected anybody from the Twin Towers. It has not brought back the Twin Towers. And it's, and it's about, I think, in a lot of ways, being more considerate to the fact that, you know, whenever, whenever the establishment or, you know, the, the, socioeconomic lead or even the people that are well off whenever it comes to our righteous indignation we don't question it but when it comes to the righteous indignations that happens every day in this country we're so quick to judge it and jump against them and again i'm not saying that writing is the right thing but then we also have to be cognizant of if these social contracts that we abide by are not being upheld for the for all of the people of the united states then those contracts are effectively void for that group of people so why should it's, it becomes less of a question of why are they looting and less of a question of why not? Um, I don't I don't. And, and also, I think it's making a lot of an assumption of whether um, the people that are writing are actually the people that are with these peaceful protest groups. I think we've seen in most groups, the people that are actually writing are not protesters. And and I, I, I mean. I don't want to make this about race. Obviously, Black Lives Matter is obviously about race. But as, uh, pertaining to the looters specifically, I haven't really seen a ton of 
black people in the looting videos I've mostly seen. And then I saw a video where someone was getting paid to loot um, and, and to destroy and deface an, uh, on Melrose. And the, everyone involved in the transaction seemed to be uh, white. Again, I, I don't think that rioting is particularly the best answer. But then when we live in an economic society where very few benefit is what invested interest does anybody have in keeping that society and that infrastructure intact? You know, it, it's like so many people, I think most of Americans don't even have $500 uh, in savings for the next paycheck. It's like, is this the America that we want to live in? If it's not, then the only way we're going to see a seismic change and a seismic shift is if we stand up against the establishment and the institution. And again, this is not, I don't even think this is about race or or rich or poor. I, I, um, well, no, I think it's more about socioeconomic than it is about race, excuse me. Um, why they feel so strong, but minorities losing their lives, but unfortunately a lot of small businesses. Right, right, and I agree. I mean, I am a small business, and, and, and to be honest, like I haven't, like I've lost quite a bit since coronavirus, and, and this is certainly not helping. But at some point, I feel like you got to lose the battle to win the war. And all in all, I've been more on the losing end of the system, even even as a trader, right? Even someone that actually had our household income was over six figures a couple of months ago. And then, you know, being, you know, quote unquote, talented in my fields and what have you, I was still never promoted and all of that because... I didn't quote unquote fit the culture, right? So it's like at some point we have to say enough is enough. And I think this is the point uh, where, and you also have to think a lot of the small businesses, uh, they have insurance, right? And I, I actually was thinking about this too, where for a lot of small businesses, they might end up being beneficiary because they'll be able to fire the insurance claims, right? And it's something that I think no one thinks about, but a lot of these small businesses, they have insurance, right? So the insurance will pay them out for the most part. And I think a lot of people, even small businesses, will actually end up benefiting from this entire situation, economically speaking. Um, so, uh, you know, like something that obviously I live like, like at the end of my block is Beverly Hills and then mine is, uh, one side is Hollywood, the other side is Beverly Hills, but it's that, and I can't really, it, I'm outside, so I can't really see the chat so well, but um, you know, I cannot imagine having to explain to my child that if they see the police or law enforcement how they would how to react because otherwise they might be killed even when they're in their right right and i think when you know the, uh, as far as the, the looting and writing that happened in beverly hills i think it was the first time that the upper socioeconomic elite had to taste or to wonder you know are we safe even though we did nothing wrong we we're in our households but at any point theoretically speaking it didn't happen someone could come in and you know hurt the people inside of the household in the same way you know someone died because the police raided the wrong house and they shot her nine times and then they arrested the boyfriend or the husband for trying to defend himself over the police going into the wrong place right we don't have those problems and, and you know we we don't go to bed thinking you know you know if i go out for a walk right now i might get shot you know and and it's the fact that even if they you know a lot of people say like oh like rice above it and what have you but even if we're very educated and you know the, the guy with the amy cooper he went to harvard right and you can be very educated you can be even very wealthy and you can go for a jog and you can get shot just for being for being black and jogging right we don't have those concerns in our country i don't have to worry about getting shot just for jogging and he could have been the president's child it, like it doesn't matter and it's the fact that just because of the color of their skin they can be affected they can get shot at any point simply by the color of their skin like it's it, it, like I, if we care about small business and if we care about those things then we all need to stand against it against racial injustice because it, you know it, it requires a lot of good people to stay silent for a tyrant to rise and and if if you hear discrimination right because something that we gotta think about too as far as the police goes it's not just the police that shot uh or that killed uh, george floyd it's about how many first of all he had many accounts of that kind of attacks but uh, how many 
police and how many people heard him say or behave in a racist manner and never said anything about it, right? So it's also everyone that stood silent. And as far as the small businesses goes, is we all need to stand against discrimination because then things like this happen and then everyone gets affected, right? Um, I'm pretty sure it's crazy. Right, protesters are not rioters, Augie, and it's something that people always like to to throw in right and again is the same kind of blanket statements and i get that a lot of people mean well but is the tone deafness of it all and the blanket statements that perpetuate this kind of division because again shooting middle eastern kids is not going to restrict anybody who's at around 11 so then why are we still doing it if the argument is that rioting isn't going to fix anything neither are these wars these wars are not resurrecting a single child that uh, that has died in 9-11. In fact, more bloodshed has happened because of it, more blood, bloodshed has happened from COVID-19 than the Vietnam War already. So I, again, it, it's like, I think it's about just being more mindful and being more cognizant of, of our train of thoughts and our ideology and our priorities. And I think that's what really a lot of this is about is reassessing our priorities as a nation. Um, so now we're in Melrose Place. Um, so anyways, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the live. We're about to going to curfew in West Hollywood and Beverly Hills. Well, Beverly Hills went to curfew at 1 p.m. West Hollywood goes into curfew right here in about 30 minutes at 4 p.m. So I love you guys. I didn't get to read a lot of your comments because it is dark out here. Um, it, does insurance not usually cover uh, acts of uh, rioting, Ricky? Because I know, I know for my insurance, I have scheduled items. So scheduled items are going to be specifically covered. So let's say I have like a blanket insurance. Um, oh shit, what happened. Um, okay, um, I'm gonna go back home. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, we the people don't go into war with the people. Right, right, guys. But if we don't want to go to war, we need to start demanding and throwing out the people. It's about holding ourselves accountable and responsible for the shit our government does. And if we don't want, like, if we don't want to go to war, we need to vote these people out. And, you know, like the Constitution says, this is about defending Constitution, not a precedent or a party. So, oh, shit, we're going back to Melrose. And this is Melrose place. But, but... You know, we need to take a lot more, I think, personal responsibility in taking out the people that are not voting in our best interest. And if that's not happening, then we need to change the laws, period. And, you know, there's a lot more of us than there is of them. And it's something that... Actually, don't stop recording, please. Yeah, but I don't want to... Like, someone lost their eye the other day from one of those rubber bullets. And... Shit. Um, and that's the part that really scares me is the rubber bullets because a journalist lost their eye and they've been attacking journalism a lot more lately and also my phone's gonna die soon I guess the police is, is kind of behind us but um, I definitely am gonna I'm definitely gonna go I think I'm gonna walk back home um, because my phone is going to say what percentage am I at? Yeah, I'm at 13%. All right, guys, um, I will talk to you guys soon. I love you all. Obviously, love Trump's hate or love beats hate. Um, and it is the highest vibrational resonance, but then sitting in our rooms and trying to ignore, trying to ignore what's happening isn't gonna help anybody either. Um, I love you guys. Give someone a hug today and I will see you guys next time.